so what's going on guys it's your boy nistro we're back with the most blatant cash grab konami has ever made in Yu-Gi-Oh has just been revealed as the rarity collection too i don't really understand konami's mindset going into that well i kind of do i understand why they decided to make a rarity collection too so soon after the first one in ocg they get a rarity collection box about every every few months or so like they've gotten multiple within the past year the reprints of which have been kind of decent they got like a lot of anime or deck specific reprints in the ocg collection boxes so here in tcg it's like tcg konami saw how well the first rarity collection did which deservingly so and we'll go into why that is in a bit but they saw how well the first rarity collection did now the second one they kind of rushed it out the door and i can't say the results will be too pleasing and there's a lot of different reasons why this set is stinky and i guess the easiest way for me to break this down is to go into the set content as you can see here farfa was doing his reveal he pulled two qcrs in the same pack so that's the biggest difference between uh, rc1 and rc2 is that rc2 you get nine cards per pack instead of five and you have basically double the chances to pull the higher rarity cards compared to before so you get two secret rares and four ultra rares per pack which means you have two chances to pull a qcr and four chances to pull the prismatic ulti or the prismatic collector's rare which is nice i guess the frustration comes when you realize that the msrp for a box is 120 is and look at this there's only 18 packs per box i believe yeah 18 packs per box and it it, it doesn't even look it doesn't even look like a booster box. This looks like some sort of like special edition. So where does Konami get off making this $120? Well, let's see what's reprinted in here so we can see, oh, maybe it might be worth the um, large amounts of money that it's demanding. And we start to go into the, the list of the rarity collection. We see the ones that we knew were gonna happen, like Rescue Cat, we knew Droll, we knew Souls, we knew Mourner, we knew Phantasme. Some people are saying the original art's gonna be in there. Some people are only saying it's gonna be Altar only. We see Dragoon, Guardian Chimera, Garura, I guess is one that I wasn't expecting. We see Crystal Wing. I kind of expected a Crystal Wing reprint sometime soon. I didn't expect to hear, but the more the merrier. Hyper Librarian, which Tengu plant players can enjoy. I don't know. And as a TG player myself, like I don't mind getting a QCR Hyper Librarian. Like that's fine with me. I'm just wondering like why it's here. Omega getting reprinted, even though the card's limited. Pep, we just got this in the tins. So I'm not too sure why this is here. Of all the cards here that like did not need a reprint, like Pep, I feel like didn't need the most. At least Garua was expensive, so you can argue that Garua was kind of necessary for a reprint or due for a reprint. You can't say the same with Pep. Coral Dragon, we just got this in a two-player starter set. I understand this is a rarity collection set. Why is this here? And then you look at like Raikou and Mega Hamster, which are clearly here for like Edison players so that Edison players can enjoy this pack, which is fine, I guess. I just, I don't know. Like there's just not enough here to really say like this is worth like a $120 a box and these are the kind of cards that I'd be pulling. Like if you're not playing branded, why are you picking up this set? And we, we see this continue, right? So the Xyz were getting Titanic Galaxy, cool. Dweller QCR is nice, I guess. Uh, Dugar's QCR is nice. Uh, this card comes in and out of formats. Spheres, okay. Spheres is for uh, Tempai. Apo, we knew we were going to get. Soul of Rage is good. Like, Soul of Rage, and you even see Abominations person at the bottom here. We got two Unchained reprints that will make these cards very affordable. On the bottom end on, and on the top end, you guys get QCRs of these cards. So, it's a nice trade-off, right? Orland QCR, because this card was not expensive <laughs> at all. Uh, access code, re uh, accessible reprints, and QCRs to rival the Starlights. And uh, Underworld Goddess to be a little more accessible. It was like a $10 card, so, you know, it's a, it's a half-decent reprint. But, like, I don't know. Like, MST, Poly. Like, MST already has so many rarities. I don't... Like, this, this is the last card that needed to be in a rarity collection set. Like, just straight up. Same thing with, like, Foolish Burial and Book of Moon. And even Econ, like you guys just made this an ultimate rare 
in an OTS pack and then you're just going to completely devalue that by putting it in a rarity collection like no one's begging for like an econ reprint like everyone already has this card it, it got reprinted in wild survivors last year it, there's no reason this should be here gold sark we knew we were going to get e telly we knew we were going to get which this one i don't mind being a high-end card but it doesn't really need a rarity collection print right it already had ulti already had collectors book of eclipse we saw this card last year already uh charge is fine but although we're getting the light of destruction reprint so i don't know it's kind of ridiculous prep is fine duality is fine because we didn't get in the first one lance over chalice here is like such a weird take I don't know. I feel like Chalice should have been the one considered before Lance because at least Chalice has more has more versatility than Lance does in any given format just because of the way the game is played. I don't know why they decided to go for Lance over Chalice or not even both of them. Like I understand like okay, RC1 had Droplet. Maybe they just want to continue putting forbidden cards in the rarity collections, which is fine. I don't mind the pattern, but why do you have Lance and not Chalice? Like Chalice is objectively the better card at the moment. Exceed Encore. I mean, it's a it's a it's one of those weird one-off cards. That's fine. Twin Twisters. This and MST in the same set just feels like a troll. Like cosmic twin twisters and MST in the same set. Like it, it kind of feels like we're being trolled. Bingo Machine, I don't mind, right? This card was a little hard to get. And you know, we're getting a blue eye structure deck or the OCG is getting a blue eye structure deck. So we, there may be more blue eye support cards coming out later this year. So bingo machine, I don't mind. That's fine. It was touching like a $15 card. So I'm glad I got rid of mine before a reprint. I knew a reprint was coming. I didn't think it would be this soon, but you know what? The more the merrier. And then we got like fusion deployment. Branded players are really in good. They, they reprinted all the planets in this set, like no Fenrir, no no Manadium reprints, like nothing, just just the planets. No tier limit reprints, actually. Tier limit reprints would have been actually pretty good because tier limits have not been reprinted. <laughs> and we know we're getting Power of the Elements in the Megatons this year as well. So I understand, like we didn't need to tier limit reprints in here, but it's a rarity collection set and at least like Rhino Heart or something could have been decent to put in here. I, I do like the Ultimate Slayer, although to say this is for uh relevant for the format it's like we're still in a shifter format it's not going to be an amazing card and then like the solemns are cool i guess anti spells limited and it's being reprinted here like i don't know they just limited the card the ban list was coming around they probably knew that they were that they had to hit this card but they kept it at one because well we already made it in rarity collection two so too bad i guess and then skill drain's fine i guess there's already enough rarities to skill drain it makes it more accessible. And I could say the same thing about all these Solemns. Like these are some of the last cards that needed to be in a rarity collection because they're, they already come in like just about every rarity. Looking at this set like in small pieces and small doses can be worth something, but for something that costs 50% more than the set before it, right? Cause when RC1 came out, it was pretty much like standard, like $80 a box or even then that's a little high. But like 75 to 80 a box and then once it got higher and higher in demand stores started charging more and the price of it went up but it started at retail price the starting price for this 120 is just insane i can't even comprehend why there's so many dozen this set. so many cards like that just aren't really here for the current format like rabbit chaos hunter meister uh edison format stuff the blue eye stuff is cool, I guess. You know, Silent Swordsman stuff is cool, I guess, but it's not really meta relevant. Ghost Org was already easily accessible. Like nothing on this page, maybe besides Guardian Chimera, was honestly hard to get. And Dragoon as well. Like nothing on this page was hard to get. Uh, Pearly was a bit expensive. Now Pearly gets to be a budget deck, I guess you could say. But y you look at just the complete total set and it just feels really weak. Even if you do think like there's a lot of good cards in the pack as a whole, it, it just buying a box of this where you're going to be pulling a lot of duds like, you know, a lot of Soul and Luna, Mind Control, uh, Borland's, you know, um, not to say Borland's bad. It's just not amazing. It's just not an amazing reprint uh, because the card was already cheap as hell. And, you know, Forbidden Lances that aren't going to do anything. Uh, Gold Sark, like a lot of cards that are limited, like Gold Sark and 
uh, Cyframe Omega and Hyper Librarian. It just feels like a very like out of touch set. Like this just doesn't feel like the same thing as Rarity Collection 1. Whereas Rarity Collection 1, you can kind of just buy a box and get a lot of the staples that would put you up to speed with modern Yu-Gi-Oh! And uh, just looking back at Rarity Collection 1, right? So we had Borload, we had Baron, uh, Striker Dragon, Selene, you know, uh, Rota, Fossil Dig, like cards that actually, for a lot of decks, like these cards are like universally pretty good. Cherubini, Nightmare Unicorn kind of got phased out by the time this reprint came out, sadly. But, you know, it's still not a terrible card to keep around if you can't afford SP. Desires, Called By, Extra, Dark Ruler, Lightning Storm, Nadir. Like, basically this entire bottom row besides Magicalized Fusion, these are all meta relevant cards like Valor, Tour Guide, Lancia, Sphere Mode, Ash, Bell, Shifter, Nibiru. That's like, there's like triple or even quadruple the number of useful cards as there were in this rarity collection too. I feel like it's just, I don't know. There's just so many cards here that were just either like not accessible or like hard to get in the same place. And now you can open a box and pull a playset of this, of all this stuff potentially. You know, like the playset may be in different rarities, but it's still a playset. You know, that you have prosperity, summon limit, a uh, deep barrier, evenly, imperm, ice dragons prison. It's like man, like this is crazy. Our fetter storm for the flu players, even though it didn't need a reprint. Some of them before it got banned, this was a pretty big deal. And just so many good cards that just, I don't mind there being like, you know, like your afterglow, which was due for a reprint. You know, your abyss dragon, which could could have been due for a reprint. The master of beasts, uh, alpha, all bads in every rarity, that makes sense. You know, a cyber angel and herald of, you know, in every rarity that makes sense. Junk speeder, because this is the starter for synchron decks, that makes sense. Mud dragon and dragsapelia as super poly targets in max rarity lone fire in max rarity tour guide max rarity something for the hero players with like ferris and uh dark law luna didn't need to be here but inspect border for the uh stun players blackwing and yes you know there are, and even lava golem skimmed over that and striker dragon uh code talker avramax artemis like there are so many cards here that even if they're not like the highest tier of meta relevant they're still like around they're still potentially usable tech cards for the future and you just can't say the same thing about like rarity collection 2. there there's like a few of them that like okay like yeah like cat dd crow droll yeah mourner yeah souls yeah uh phantasme of course ghost ogre yeah but then it's like it kind of starts to get harder the more you go down unless you're playing branded like this really is just a branded pack like i can't imagine cracking open this set for the price that it is without being a branded player and like enjoying or like being satisfied with like what i pulled i i definitely would not be satisfied unless i pulled like a qcr um, access code talker so we come to the end and it just feels like I don't know this set, this set just feels like a blatant cash grab like even you know, like opening omega you know like n mega hamsters like the solemn it just doesn't feel good to have these in the rarity collection when you know like we already know warning has ulti judgment has ulti already twin twisters is just out of nowhere the pearly cards are cool i guess dragoon is nice i guess like foolish is nice too i don't know if foolish had an ultimate rare I think Foolish didn't have an ultimate rare before. I think Secret was the highest, so I guess Foolish is fine. And yeah, the, the planets are gonna make the some of the, some of these decks a lot less expensive to buy into, but you're still gonna need to buy tier, like the rest of the tier core. <laughs> tier tier cash is still crazy. Uh, Rhino Heart's still pretty pricey. And I guess that's it. Because of the way tier is played now, you're gonna have to buy like a bunch of different engines and tech cards and stuff. So it's not even like tier is um, that crazy of a deck right now. It, it Maybe once Fiendsmith comes out, it'll be like a crazier deck, but right now tier is just okay. I'm not gonna bother with the set costing $120 a box. It, it just doesn't feel good. I, I just can't spread joy about this set because it, it just doesn't seem to be much here. I would say buy singles and don't waste your money, but I know some people are gonna wanna buy this box anyway, but as I said, it doesn't even look like a box. It looks just as disappointing as it is.
and I think that's <laughs> the most valid. Uh, this picture of how this box looks is, is an accurate portrayal of how you're going to feel after you crack one of these open. Maybe you might be delighted by the, you know, shiny cards or whatever when you're opening the box. But like once you start to add up everything and it's like, oh man, I didn't really pull shit. And usually like the way the Yu-Gi-Oh packs work is that like when a box usually has like the more high end kind of stuff, but the middle or low end isn't really worth it. Then the way that you mitigate that is that you get more boxes of the car. Uh, of the set so that the, you have a higher chance of pulling the high end stuff, which can r reduce the risk associated with opening packs instead of buying singles, right? So if you're buying two or two or three boxes of a set instead of just one box, you know, you get a higher chance of pulling like QCRs and stuff, which may make up for the lack of value that you get in, a, in any individual box. But to have this thing at 120 a, a pop, 119, 120, GC sold out at 124, almost 1400 for a case or over 1400 for a case at this point. How are you supposed to get your money back from that? There's nothing in this set other than some QCRs that are going to be worth. I doubt any of the QCRs are going to be worth it, over a hundred, maybe besides access code. And even then all these, none of these cards are like three ofs, except for maybe like some of the, like the archetype related stuff, like the unchained stuff is a three of like droll maybe, but I can't see like large amounts of value coming from this set like Garua QCR I doubt it's going to be worth much maybe Guardian Chimera QCR and then the CR was was like 50. it was like 50 bucks for the CR before it significantly <laughs> dropped in price and even even 50 for it isn't like a terribly bad price so it was like 20 or 30s for like the Ultra or the Secret and 50 for the Q, uh for the CR uh, really I really feel bad for this guy who paid 50 for it like right before it got re revealed for RC2. It's just a it's just the nature of the beast sometimes. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I doubt a QCR of this is going to cost more than like 60 or, or 70. And just the vast amounts of them is going to bring down the price as well. Now that the CR is like 30, maybe the QCR is going to be like 40, 50. Ash is still uh, how, how much is Ash sitting at? Ash is sitting at like 170 ish. And that's like the high end, right? Like no other QCR in this set is worth over like 70 bucks. Like other than Imperm, like Ash and Imperm are, are the only ones worth over 70. The rest of these like 50s, 40s, 30s. Like look at how quick it deviate, it goes down. And these are some of the best cards in the set, like QCR Shifter, QCR Evenly. QCR Prosperity only being like 45. No card in RC2 is as good as Prosperity or as relevant as Prosperity. No cards as, as relevant as Talents or Imperm. And these cards are not holding high prices like at all. So I can't see the long term value of this set being worth it when you have these cards from RC1 that have way more long term value but are just not that high in actual value like even lightning storm it only has 13 listings left it's still sitting at like 30 bucks it's it's demand is not going to significantly increase its prices called by the grave being a one of is still 40 dollars. it's demand did not increase its price that much baron was more expensive before the ban list uh let me see it was sitting at what it was in like 40s before the ban list because the ban list was revealed, yeah, around here, and then it dropped off. It, it, it was in F forties before the ban list, which is like, it's good. It's not amazing though, you know. So it's it's hard for me to see where the value is going to be in RC two. I just don't think this is going to be a good set to pick up. My my advice would be is to get low rarity staples of whatever you can get. Try to win packs of stuff from like tournaments. But don't actually spend your money on on the set. It's it's just not worth it. So that'll be all for now. This has been your boy Nistro here. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below.